As you recover from yet another nasty tremor and look around in the debris for useful resources, you spot an odd-looking man sitting behind a table, surrounded by all sorts of strange contraptions, scrolls, files, and tools. You approach the man and he looks up at you, puzzled, then looks around for a bit and mumbles, Damn mercs, one tremor and they've run off. What? I mean, how can I help you? Ah, oh, well, I'm measuring the tremors, the strength, how long they last, the frequency with which they occur, trying to pinpoint the epicenter, you see. Like finding patient zero, I suppose. That is, a person who fell ill first, or in this case, a place, perhaps. That is the thing that began the disaster, be it disease, curse, act of the gods. They all tend to have a beginning, like the burning of the cosmic tree that brought about the darkness centuries ago, yes? Ah, well, the not-so-reputable history of my profession. The long and the short of it is that scholars meddled with the ways of the gods, thought to rid us all of magic, bring about an age of reason. Only they didn't account for the gods having an actual world-saving job. The cosmic tree, you see, is the core that makes our Slavian gods divine. Its roots hold the key to the underworlds. The trunk gives connection to the mortal realms. 
And the crown, well, that keeps the darkness in check. The tree burnt. The age of darkness consumed us until the awakening. Brave champions of the gods restored the tree and thus gave divine power back to the Pantheon. Or at least that's the official line. There were rumors of other paths, tales of the tree being reborn despite those faithful failing the task, attempts to keep the dark going, all sorts. And there is talk of gods fighting, disappearing. I do not know more. It is not my area of expertise. Ah, the right question, precisely. Why indeed? The tree is saved, but it is clearly weakened again, perhaps threatened by the shattering. Gods that once were have disappeared, and others have come to be, and all are trying to learn why this is happening. I suspected giants, of course, but I don't know. The giants, ah, yes. There is speculation that the two are related, but in what way, I do not know. Giants did return, but they were put back to sleep, else we'd see them roaming our land still. It's not like they were stealthy about it, so some other connection must be hidden from us. No, not directly, I would imagine, but something shattered the earth, and while we survived, the shaking is getting more frequent. I fear we may yet face extinction if we do nothing. Me? Oh, gods, no. You will, or won't. That will be your choice once more, I suppose, as the wheel must turn. I'm merely taking measurements, looking for clues and happy to share them. I'm a learned man. I just know these things. He goes quiet for a time, murmurs something under his breath, then replies, I am a scholar, yes, but no stranger to the ways of fate. I see many things, and many are so confusing. Past, present, future, possibilities spilling over and over. And I saw you come to me, and I see you as you are, chosen or what have you. Not merely by your gods, for with those I squabble a lot, but by fate. Now enough of my ramblings, no? I am close, but I need to take measurements from within a cave, and it seems occupied by bandits. A large cohort, uninterested in the fate of the world, you see. Well, the way I see it, there are a few ways to deal with it. One, try to parley with a lot. An awful idea if you ask me, but who knows? Second's obvious, but not my cup of tea. Brute force. And then there's always other ways. Like I heard the scavengers who live nearby hate the bandits. The feud amongst rabble, hey? Perhaps use that. Yes, your grasp of the finer details is impressive. I should also say I tried asking them. Got myself robbed, beaten, and barely escaped with my life. Just so you know the salt you're dealing with, if you choose to help, that is.
Ever since that odd dream, or even before that, you had a sense of the world being wrong. It is a fleeting feeling, a butterfly that flutters in your gut every now and again. You ignored it before, but now its intensity makes you fall to your knees. And as you look around, searching for a reason, a black crow lands on a branch and stares at you intensely. True to your path, seeking knowledge before action, at least this time. You did not stay on this path when dealing with the failed chosen, did you? Personally, I am ever cautious of the weaves of magic and their chaotic ways, so it is hard to question your path here, and yet the gods choose to do so. I am no one of importance, at least not to you, but I do have a question for you. Why are you needed? Why don't your gods send armies of Chosen to solve this world-shattering problem? And do you think you have reached your true potential yet, Chosen One? An inquisitive mind is the brightest, yes. I do, but I will not share them with you. I am merely here to point you in the right direction. If you wish to unlock your true potential, you must find out why the gods remain weak. Follow your divine path and search for the truth. You come to the abandoned ruins of a stone-built shram, which some would call a temple in the Western dialects. Apart from the silence and dust, you see surprisingly few signs of decay. There are two distinct places of offering in the center of the shram. You see symbols similar to those of the cosmic pantheon, but you do not recognize the deity worshipped here. There is no sign of the crow that sent you here, but you feel you are in the right place. There are two altars, so you are likely expected to leave an offering to the gods.
You cannot figure out what needs to be done here, beyond placing some kind of offering on the altars.